Hello and welcome to this video in which we look at the kinematics associated with a particle moving in one dimension under constant acceleration. The example that we'll use for this is um, uh, this person here has a ball, a little red ball, and uh, they're going to throw it upward at 20 feet per second and the acceleration in this case due to gravity is 32 feet per second downwards or I'm sorry this should be 32 feet per second squared downwards and uh, the question is when does the ball hit the ground how fast is it moving when it hits the ground and what's its highest elevation how high does it actually get so um, just a reminder this is about kinematics which is the relationship between position velocity and acceleration and this is essentially equations of motion. It's independent of what causes the acceleration. So for example, we could set up another problem in which this person was floating out in space with no gravitational attraction and threw the ball in a given direction and then the ball had a little rocket on it that gave it the constant acceleration and the kinematics would be exactly the same even though the source of the acceleration and the context of the problem would be quite different. Okay, so that's our goal. Uh, the acceleration is constant um, and so we can use the equations of motion for constant acceleration which are that the velocity at a given point in time is equal to the acceleration times time plus v0 where 0 is the initial velocity and we're assuming that uh, this initial velocity is at time 0. Uh, this equation for those of you who care about how these things come to be is obtained by integrating the acceleration uh, from 0 to t. The position which we'll call y here because we're talking about things going up and down vertically is one half a t squared plus v zero t plus y zero where y zero is the initial velocity I'm sorry the initial position or the initial height in this case and this is obtained by integrating the velocity okay so um, based on what we're given it's actually pretty easy then to plug into these equations and we have then that the velocity is given by the acceleration which is minus 32 feet per second squared plus the initial velocity which is oops, times t plus the initial velocity which is 20 feet per second okay and um, that's pretty straightforward. If you look at the graph of velocity, it looks like this blue line. So it starts out at time zero at 20 feet per second, and then because the acceleration is negative, it decreases, uh, goes through zero about here, at about time about here, and then continues to decrease in, as it's negative. Okay, so this is the velocity as a function of time. The position as a function of time will also be, it's easy to obtain by just plugging stuff in, one half a t squared will be minus 16 feet per second squared times t squared plus 20 feet per second times t plus our initial uh, position which is six feet and so if I graph this I get the following it's this parabola and at uh, zero you can see that the initial uh, height is six feet it goes up and then comes back down and uh, goes through the value of zero out here at some point. So what we need to do is uh, we want to find the time that it hits the ground. So we actually want to find the time where the altitude here is zero. Um, we can do this by 
solving the equation y of t is equal to 0. And if you look at this, you recognize that it's a quadratic in t. Okay, so I've got a t squared term here, a t term here, and no t term here. And so um, I could solve it with the quadratic formula, uh, where t would be uh, negative 20 plus or minus the square root of 20 squared minus 4 times 16 times 6. All of that divided by 2 times minus 16. Um, so that's the quadratic formula. I'm not going to do it that way. Uh, unfortunately, I have deep psychological scars uh, from having to uh, solve quadratic formulas over and over again. Uh, back in the day when I was doing this as a student, that was the only option. Today we have things like Wolfram Alpha. And so if you can use something like Wolfram Alpha, I would certainly suggest that you do. And uh, so what I would have then is the equation minus 16t squared plus 20t plus 6 is equal to 0. You just type that into Wolfram Alpha and you hit return and it says this is what uh, that equation looks like. That agrees with the plot that we, um, that we uh, showed earlier. And if I scroll down, it says that uh, my solutions are t is equal to minus 1 fourth uh, and t is equal to 3 halves. Okay, the t is equal to minus 1 fourth solution, this guy here, is not plausible because that would be the point before I started the experiment. Um, so we'll throw that away. And so then the uh, t is equal to 3 halves, that's the uh, result that I want. So basically, uh, when does the ball hit the ground? The answer to that is t is equal to 3 half seconds. The question then, how fast is it moving? Well, the velocity at 3 half seconds is going to be, um, let's see, minus 32 feet per second squared times t, which is 3 half, plus 20 feet per second. And when I work this out, um, I got that this is minus 28 feet per second. So basically what's happening is when the ball hits the ground, it's going 28 feet per second, and the negative sign says it's going downward. If I go to my graph, um, that, okay, this is the point at which it hits the ground, and you can see that that does look like about minus 28 feet per second. Okay, so the next thing we want to do, I guess the last thing we want to do for this, is we want to find the um, highest elevation that the ball gets to. So if we go to our graph, we see that the highest elevation that it gets to is about here, um, and, but we want to actually solve for it. I make the claim that at its point of highest elevation, uh, the ball has a velocity of zero. So there's an intuitive way to look at this and a mathematical way to look at it. The intuitive way is at its highest point of elevation, it has stopped moving up and it's starting to move down. So uh, this represents, uh, on, on this part of the velocity curve, this represents when the ball is moving up, this represents when the ball is moving down. So at zero, or when the velocity is zero, uh, that basically would be then uh, the velocity at its highest point. And if we can find the time uh, at which the velocity was zero, then we can find the time at which it was at its highest point. The mathematical argument for this is that um, velocity, this straight line, is the derivative of position, this curved line. And if you want to find maxima or minima of, uh, of a function, you take its derivative and set that derivative equal to zero. So again, since the velocity is the derivative of the position, uh, we want to set the velocity equal to zero, and that will give us the time at which the ball is at its peak. So 
uh, doing that, um, the velocity, setting the velocity to zero, we have minus 32 feet per second squared times t plus 20 feet is equal to zero. And if we solve this for t, we get t is 20 feet over, oh, I'm sorry, this should be feet per second, over 32 feet per second squared, which gives us then 5 eighths seconds. And then the altitude uh, for this y of 5 eighths seconds, I take this, or I take 5 eighths seconds, I just plug it back into this expression for y of t, and when I work it out, I discover that y of 5 eighths seconds is 12.25 feet. Okay, so there you have it. What that says then is that this value here is 12.25 feet, which from the graph looks like that's about right. Okay, so hopefully this made sense. Um, you may not find, uh, it turns out that in physics texts and beginning uh, uh, mechanics texts, uh, you're throwing balls all over the place. Uh, it turns out this may not be the sort of thing you do professionally, but this type of problem where you have an object that you can consider to be a single body, a point, you're not worried about rotation, um, you're not worried about things like atmospheric drag or stuff like that. As long as that's the case and the acceleration is constant, then these equations for constant acceleration apply and you can find out velocities, positions, and such as you need them. So hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for watching.